Electric here. Today is Sunday, October 20th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. We reported on GM's Investor Day last week, and it seems their new battery strategy is well underway. This week, GM Ventures, an investment branch of General Motors, announced a $10 million investment into Forge Nano, a battery materials technology company. The partnership focuses on deploying Forge Nano's atomic armor thin films coatings for battery materials, which could potentially enhance battery lifespan, efficiency, and energy density, while reducing costs. Atomic Armor technology is designed to improve cell safety to reduce thermal runaway events. Its ultra-thin ceramic layer coats materials down to the atomic level. Through the partnership, Forge Nano says they will continue to build upon their expertise in engineering next-generation battery materials to advance their performance capabilities alongside GM. Previous funding rounds done by Forge have been supported by Volkswagen and LG Technology Ventures, amongst other investors. This week, GM also entered an agreement to launch a joint venture with Lithium Americas Corp, which will fund the development and operation of Thacker Pass in Humboldt County, Nevada, a lithium carbonate mining project aimed to initially produce up to 40,000 tons of battery-grade lithium carbonate per year. Under the terms of the agreement, GM will hold a 38% stake in the venture, contributing both $430 million in cash and $195 million as a loan to fund the first phase of the project. Lithium Americas will manage the project and oversee operations with a 62% ownership stake. They will contribute $387 million. This partnership extends GM's existing offtake agreement, securing lithium supply for up to 20 years, aligning with the project's financial obligations, including a $2.3 billion loan from the U.S. Department of Energy. Lithium Americas intends to secure materials for 1 million electric car batteries per year, and deliveries are expected to begin in the second half of 2026. It is encouraging to see General Motors take the steps to invest in battery materials that will scale their EV lineup and strive for the implementation of battery technology for more efficient and reliable batteries. While we're on the topic of EV battery materials, Lighten, a Silicon Valley startup backed by Stellantis and FedEx, has announced its plans to construct the world's first lithium sulfur battery gigafactory in Reno, Nevada. Maybe you caught a glimpse of their booth at the North American Battery Show in our coverage last week. The company plans to invest over a billion dollars for a new 1.25 million square foot facility located on a 125 acre campus in the Reno Air Logistics Park and break ground next year. The site is set to be operational after their first phase of the project in 2027. In total, this project is expected to create over 1,000 jobs. The plant will have a capacity to produce up to 10 gigawatt hours of batteries annually when completed. The facility will manufacture cathode active materials, lithium metal anodes, and assemble lithium sulfur cells. The company claims this facility will enable a 100% domestically manufactured battery. Lighten's lithium sulfur batteries promise higher energy density than other lithium metal batteries with up to 40% lighter weight than lithium ion batteries and 60% lighter weight than lithium iron phosphate batteries. The historic limitations of lithium sulfur batteries have included swelling, low cycle life, and expedited degradation from what is called the polysulfide shuttling effect. During the cycling process, the negative electrode generates soluble polysulfides. These dissolve into the electrolyte and can pass through the separator to the anode surface, which can cause permanent damage to the active materials, reducing the cell's ability to accept a charge. Lighten's cathode includes a 3D graphene, which is designed to mitigate polysulfide shuttling. The 3D graphene is made by converting greenhouse gases into solid carbon and hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas will be captured for reuse as a clean fuel and the carbon helps to hold the cathode together while improving conductivity. Consider how battery affordability makes certain trade-offs acceptable. For example, Household alkaline batteries are cycled one time and then disposed of. A low-cost domestically produced battery chemistry, which is replaceable, will make sense for many applications. 
Leighton plans to supply industries including aviation, aerospace, shipping, logistics, and automotive. We've talked about many battery chemistries over the last 30 episodes. Which do you find the most promising? In charging news, Volkswagen's EV charging network, Electrify America, has inaugurated its technology campus near its headquarters in Northern Virginia. They've even expanded their center of excellence facility with a new technology development lab. The new facility spans over 32,000 square feet. It's equipped with 22 fast chargers, which allow their team of engineers and technicians to test charging hardware, energy storage systems, and evaluate new charging technology. There, the team will also perform testing on new software and firmware. The new technology development lab objectives include stress testing equipment, component evaluation, maximizing power delivery, and environmental testing. The facility will continue to host interoperability testing with over 25 automakers and more than 40 vehicle models, which we were able to see for ourselves in our first visit back in the summer of 2021. We were actually the first ever media outlet allowed to film inside the Center of Excellence. I'll link this oldie but goodie below if you want to check out that coverage. The new technology campus also houses their Network Operations Center, where engineers and software specialists monitor the network performance and address customer concerns. Their field service team is located there as well and provides field learning feedback to further improve charger performance, and they also have a division that focuses on preventative maintenance. I frequently drive my EV between Michigan, Tennessee, and Florida, and I have noticed a significant improvement on reliability on the Electrify America network over the last year. Keep up the progress, EA. Another announcement from Volkswagen this week is that the ID Buzz will come with three years of a complimentary Pass Plus subscription to the Electrify America network. Owners will also get 500 kilowatt hours of free energy. Nissan has also announced a charging update with their newly established Nissan Energy Charge Network for Aria and future EV models. It essentially consolidates 90,000 third-party in-network chargers into a database from providers including Electrify America, Shell Recharge, ChargePoint, and EVgo. This allows for simplified access to locating charging stations, real-time location data, and processing of charging session payments. The concept appears to be very similar to the Blue Oval Charge Network, which is accessible in Ford's EVs. Some of you follow my e-bike and e-motorcycle coverage over on the Misco Electric Ride Reviews YouTube channel. This week, I have some two-wheel e-mobility developments to share on this channel. Unfortunately, it is not great news. Wisconsin-based aspiring electric motorcycle and e-bike manufacturer Fuel has filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy just before they were expected to deliver their first motorcycle, the Flow. The company was founded by Eric Buell, a former Harley-Davidson employee and affiliate. The Flow was set to deliver 150 miles of range with a 10 kilowatt hour battery pack and recharge in just 30 minutes with its fast charging capability. The integrated rear axial flux motor was expected to deliver 47 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque with a zero to 60 time of 3.5 seconds. Their latest update back in July revealed design implementations as they were continuing to develop the product for production. In May of last year, the team at Fuel invited us to Wisconsin to film with their long-range fluid e-bike prototypes. At the time, they had raised over $1.5 million from almost 600 backers on Indiegogo. Yikes. The other two-wheel story is related to Italian high-performance electric motorcycle brand Energica Motor Company. In 2022, a 75% stake of Energica was acquired by Ideonomics. Two months ago, Ideonomics was delisted from the New York Stock Exchange and is under investigation by the SEC. This week, Energica declared bankruptcy after 10 years in operation. Other ventures owned by Ideonomics include commercial wireless charging provider Wave, commercial EV fleet company affiliated with Bob Lutz, Via Motors, and electric tractor maker Solectrek. Bankruptcies like these remind us that name recognition, innovation, and product quality are not enough to guarantee success. Too often, direct organizational mismanagement and ties to misaligned investors make survival impossible. Well, 
That wraps up today's episode. If you found value in The Current, I hope you'll consider sharing a link to this episode online. Please join me on other social media platforms, including X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up-to-the-minute insights and exclusive coverage. Thank you so much for watching, and until next week, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.